Welcome to Attican Plays Railway Empire. All right, this is Attican, and welcome to part four of our first playthrough of the Viva Mexico uh, scenario that came out with the D DLC. And uh, we had reached the point where um, we have finished off uh, building up Mexico and connecting it to Veracruz. We have uh, uh, run the... Um, uh, coffee down to Veracruz. We decided to go with the uh, uh, Mexican politician and support him, so we did not run the uh, coffee to Acapulco. So now we're playing that path. This is a great one because it gives you two paths. So we're playing one path, and you can imagine, of course, we're going to go back and play the other path as well. But um, we supported the Mexican politician, so we had to grow four cities down in the in the south of Mexico and near Veracruz. So Oaxaca, which is just uh, near Veracruz, plus Campeche, Belize City, and Merida down in the south. And we have run um, weapons down there to grow them, and uh, well, to satisfy uh, the next task we got. So in order to build up his arsenal, he wanted to run, um, the Mexican politician that is, wanted to run uh, weapons from Mexico City down to each of those four cities. So we've got all that taken care of by connecting up and using our routes to kind of link and do a, we did a bunch of fancy uh, crosses and joins and, and loops and stuff in uh, the last uh, episode. So in this one, we're just focusing on growing the cities and going around to each one to see what do they need. And they, they need uh, really coffee and sugar is a big one. Uh, there we just finished off there's another one of our um belize city we just uh, we'd already done a walk uh weapons or arms they're calling them and uh, now we've delivered the loads of weapons to uh, belize city and i call them multiple things just like i do okay so um so now we're looking at how we're going to grow. The hardest one to grow is Madarita because it's the farthest away, partially, and partially because it doesn't have a, um, a meat industry or um, it has beer coming in because we actually have lines connecting it to T-Town and to um, Veracruz. But um, it has to grow to 60, which is a little bigger. And uh, so it is growing now, but it's just barely, and we're, and we're trying to struggle with what all we can get. And that, that message there says, well, we just finished off uh, Oaxaca. So Oaxaca is now large enough for us, and we've got to focus on these last three, Campeche, Merida, and Belize City. And uh, here I'm uh, missing a um, supply tower. Uh, this uh, we, we've hooked in several lines that are coming in through there now and i'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute uh all that traffic that's coming in there but i uh, decided to throw in some supply towers in a couple places to make sure we can get supplies to these uh, trains uh the breakdowns we're ignoring for now and there we just finished another task uh it's probably weapons to another city so um at this point we are, um, again, just focusing on the um, growing the three cities. And you saw I turned down that villain's ball. I, I don't really use the negative tactics on my opponent. For one thing, uh, right at this moment, I, my opponent is irrelevant. He's up in America and doesn't seem to be bothering me, and I'm not messing with him. And uh, secondly, I got better things to spend my money on. Although, you will notice we have hit that beautiful point we now have a really strong economy, a $4 million. I'm, I'm building as fast as I can. I can't spend it as fast as I can make it. That's where you want to get in this game. So what we're doing now is setting up for the advance. I, I checked Merida. It's not going to need these until toward the end of the growth that we need, but it will need them. So I'm going to go ahead and set up this uh, veggie line into Merida so that uh, as soon as it is big enough to uh, take in vegetables, they'll be ready to come in there and help it uh, continue its growth. And remember from uh, last time, we actually bought out the meat industry in Merida and replaced it with a um, uh, textile industry so that would help uh, Belize City and Campeche grow with those textiles and we knew we could run cotton to Merida. 
So it's, again, it's a little harder to because we don't have a a classic beer meat line here. Uh, it's a little harder to grow Merida, but we are we are. I think that last message was another another one of those saying we've got. Um, Yeah, here we go. So now we've uh, finished all four of our uh, weapons shipments uh, with those lines we made directly from Mexico City to each of those um, um, little cities down there in the south. So back to what we were doing. We're, we're going to run carrots in, or excuse me, <laughs> vegetables, and then we'll run uh, fruit into Merida as soon as it's big enough. And we're just going to link our fruit line into the uh, vegetable line. And let them share. There's not much, there's not a whole lot of activity on that line coming in. So now as soon as Marita hits a big enough size, it'll start getting vegetables and it'll start getting fruit. And so we've done almost everything we can do to make it grow, except for wheat. There's still a problem. We just don't have wheat down there for those cities. And that makes it tough. Those, those big six, I call them, the uh, wheat, the meat, if you, the cattle, if you have a meat industry, the meat, the, the beer, um, in this case, in Mexico, the coffee and the logs, those six are the, are the main ones that you need to get, to, to get your cities going and get them started and to make them grow. Now we're going to buy this refinery down in Belize City because we want a refinery? No, not at all. Because we want to replace it with something more useful to, again, to help all these cities grow. So we're looking around, we see we've got textiles up there in um, Marita. And so it would be a great thing to have a tailor here in Belize City so that he can take the um, textiles from Marita. That'll give us more traffic on that line between uh, the two cities. It'll give us a profitable business here in um, Belize City. And those that clothing can be then again shipped out and used to grow, stimulate growth as these cities get large enough. So now our textile industry in Merida is going to have a lot more customers and uh, everybody's going to grow just a little bit better. So, and, and we get rid of that wasted, that useful, useless um, industry. When you have an industry that's built, that the computer builds, that is just not going to get supplied, it's just it's just stunting the growth of your city. So you got to watch that and get rid of them. That's why you really want to have a strong economy so you can do what we just did there, which was buy that industry out and replace it with something that makes more sense. Now we got a bonus to, a big bonus to connect this milk, so obviously we're going to take advantage of that and run milk um, I think we just start by running it down to um, Belize City. I, I obviously I wrote, built that big station thinking we might end up built running the milk to all the cities, and to tell you the truth, I don't think I actually had time to do it. I, I mean, it's something you could certainly do, but I don't think we actually ended up doing it. You'll see why in a minute. I imagined it. The CT town just hit 120,000 population. We haven't even really focused on it. It's got some good stuff in it. And now we see that another city, uh, Belize City, is now large enough. So, oh, and there goes Campeche. It just clicked over as we were watching. So we're now we're down to Merida. So we're going to focus our attention on Merida and see what we can do. It's only at 30 some thousand, we need to get to 60. So we've, um, 
and you can see there the textiles are, are it's now grown enough so that the textiles are helping it's it's actually supplying itself with textiles so to speak so that's a good thing but we need to get some more goods up there to uh, Merida and get it growing it's the only thing keeping us from being done and it's not quite getting textiles fast enough so I wanted to see do I have a problem with uh, the number? I've got three trains running that seems like it would be enough but I wanted to see if it's slow going into Merida. And you can see we've got a lot of stuff going on in Merida. There's a lot of uh, traffic down there. And you also notice that all that, that those goods are coming in to that one station there. And I was concerned that that might be a bottleneck. But right here, it looks pretty good. It's actually running pretty well, pretty smoothly. So we're getting pretty good turnaround there. That's not so bad. And again, you can see our money is just, uh, you know, money is not the, we're not, this game is not about money anymore. We've passed that point. We're now making money big time. Marita is growing. So it looks like we're close, close to the end. Now here I took a chance, to, uh, took an opportunity to go up and check out the uh, realistic track that uh, old Don Lorenzo built. And you can see he's using double track. He's running everybody on the right hand side. He's got some signals in there. He's got, um, uh, you know, I, I mean, it looks like a real rail line. And the other thing you notice, he's got a line that goes to his city, kind of a, he's got like a main trunk line. And then, then his um, uh, industries are hooking into that rather than the way they do it in the, the easy mode, they'll actually run a line straight through the industry and straight to the town, town to industry to industry to town or whatever, and really take advantage of the fact that those trains can pass through each other. And, um, and by the way, parenthetically, I've even played around with that in the realistic mode to see if it even makes any sense at all. It does not, by the way. But um, at any rate, now we're trying to see how can we make this go. And right there, I put a construction in. I, I, you know, we've got so much money now, I'm thinking uh, it's time to do, con do our, um, I didn't mean construction, I meant a maintenance uh, shed. But I, I think that was a mistake. I mean, I think it actually slowed us. It slows, it slows you down. When you put the maintenance in, it slows down everything because now everybody stops and gets maintained and your whole economy grinds to a Now, in theory, it should spread back out and, you know, the maintenance should be more evenly spaced and everything. And the train should run more smoothly and it should work better. And I can't swear that it does, to be honest with you. I, 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 that, might, that would be worth some experimentation if somebody wanted to run an experiment, see if you can see if you can run like a big city and and take it up to a point or a big uh, map and take it up to a point and with no maintenance at all and see where you and then run it for another year and then uh, take it up to that same point at a save point and then go back and and put maintenance on you but you can see Merida is steadily growing we can see it even on our objectives so it looks like we're just about done with I'm thinking at this point we're just about done with the uh, mission and so I'm putting the maintenance on there just to be a good boy and have it have it uh, you know seems to me more realistic that you would have maintenance and I think what makes it hard the way the game is designed is the maintenance is done on the platform. So there's no depot that these trains go off to to get main maintenance. So when they are being maintained in service, they are tying up that, that platform. And that means everybody else stacks behind them and waits on them to get out. And then the next one comes in, and sure enough, he needs maintenance, and we're waiting some more. And you just end up in this horrible throughput for a while. And, and really, you know, I'm not even sure it's, I, I'm not even sure maintenance is worth doing, honestly. If you don't mind getting all those annoying messages, I'm not sure it's even worth doing at all. But anyway, we're getting there. We're in 1876, end of 1876 almost. And so it's only taken us, what did we start in 73? So four years to get to this point. And now I'm going to try, I'm looking at running wheat all the way up to Merida to see if I can, you know, 
stimulate some growth by running wheat. And it's not going to be the easiest line in the world. Even with our fancy new crossovers and everything, that's not going to be the easiest thing in the world to set up. So what I decided to do was try to run it uh, through Campeche along the coast there rather than trying to hop over all those existing lines or to link up with all those lines because as you continually add um, uh, trains to your existing lines they just get you know to the point where you hit gridlock where you just have too many trains. So. Um, run out of space because of the water there. It's very hard to get it to come in. Well, not just the water. that The angle and the um, um, supply tower make it tough. So I decided to just bite the bullet and build a bridge into Campeche. And again, this is the kind of thing you can do after you have plenty of money. Uh, early in the game, you wouldn't even contemplate building that bridge. It'd be funds you just wouldn't want to let go of at that point. So we're going to run into um, into actually two tracks down there. Not that it matters that much. And, and have a line that, that's capable of getting into uh, Merida through Campeche. And we'll double track, track it to the, the bridge and just run it through a single platform. So there'll be a little bottleneck there in Campeche, but it's not going to have a lot of trains on it, so it should be fine. And we can run it out the other end. Now we've got to figure out how to hook it up. decided to hook it up to the existing line there and I'm using kind of the old old school way of, of doing my um, junction there so now there's a now that that line that runs from um, Veracruz to Campeche uh, can now uh, take traffic uh, from It can go down to that other um, um, terminal there that, that has a pass through to um, Merida, and now we can kind of borrow that line to run our wheat up to Merida. So now we're we're working our, slowly working our way back. Now we've got now we've got a line that that closest to the water line is capable of going to Merida. So now we're going to build an old-fashioned bridge, no um, flat crossings here. We're going to build a bridge and cross those other lines and now our wheat can get across and hook up with that existing um, Campeche to Veracruz line. I'm sorry, if it, I'm, this got to be confusing for you. I'm, I'm getting a little confused as I try to describe it. Uh, all these lines. But um, now I'm trying to figure out how am I going to make this work and get this connection right. And it turns out the best way to do it is just to do kind of a uh, cut it off at the pass like that and then kind of use our, our again, our old school way of, um, of making the connection over so that these lines, so that you can use both lines. And I built a little X here. I don't think the X actually helps us but it doesn't matter uh, 
and now I've got something wrong. It didn't lie. The X actually turns out to be a problem, or the extra line that I had in there is a problem. Actually, one of the things that uh, now that there's the new functionality, kind of still like I told you, I'm still getting used to it. But now we do have the ability to run a line from our wheat farm directly to Merida. So we can get wheat into uh, Merida on a, a, a sort of pseudo dedicated line, because it is a dedicated line at the main place, the, the, the place that matters, which is the um, actual, you know, near the station where it's trying to uh, drop off. But I notice here it's not giving me both ways. And that's because I haven't got my signal set correctly. Come out of Campeche, I think. And I'll figure that out in just a moment here. You notice when you look when I first. Built, I built that line, it was only showing going in one track, it wasn't using both sides. That's because I didn't have the signal set here and the direction set. And now if we look at our uh, line, it should give us a much better picture. There we go. Now it's going uh, using both sides of the track to go to Campeche, going through Campeche and across the bridge, and then using both sides of the track on the other side. So now we've got a nice clean line that will run uh, wheat up to Merida. And, uh, you know, I, I've got several critiques of my own play here uh, for this one. And, and here's one. I should have done this way back when. Wheat is fundamental. Now, I should have had some way to get wheat to those four, those three cities down there in the south right off the bat. This, this is not something that should have waited. There should have been wheat down there. And um, whether I ran direct lines or whether I ran... Uh, a warehouse, you know, and put a bunch of stuff in it, including wheat, whatever, there should have been all the supplies down there. So so this should have been done faster than it was, so shame on me. But you can see we're getting good growth even without the wheat. And oh, and I see something that's wrong. I think this is a mistake. I just noticed that, that um, Merida still wants cattle. It should not want cattle. Oh, oh, I take that back. Oh, I see what happened. The the computer went in behind us, though, so, okay, and built a meat industry. Well, that's not, you know, no, no, no. We don't want that. Um, we've already, uh, you know, we've already got meat coming into the city from um, uh, two places, from Belize City and, and from Campeche. So getting meat is not your problem. Now, if we get rid of that that cattle industry, we won't have to um, ship uh, meat down there anymore. So we demolish that, and then we put something in that uses stuff we already have, namely, we know we've got a log supply because we set up those logs coming in. So now this furniture industry is getting plenty of logs, and that's going to that's going to give uh, uh, that way we're going to get good demand satisfaction because now we've got even more stuff coming in. So now we're getting close. So now we're up to 57,000, it looked like, out of the 60. So we're just about there for growing Merida. Although you can see it's not, it's still, it's on the cusp. It's not quite getting over the top. That wheat, um, lesson learned for me, get your wheat down there. And to tell you the truth, I have no clue what I'm doing right now. I'm just staring at it. Um, I'm sure I'm thinking some deep, uh, meaningful thought, but I couldn't tell you what it is. Oh, I see. Our sat's way down now. So we've got it. We're down 52%. And the cotton isn't coming in fast enough. Um, this is very frustrating, and it's my own fault. Because look right here. Remember when I said that seemed to be moving okay? Well, it's really not. It's a little slow getting all those goods into uh, Merida because I've got too much coming in to that one uh, 
platform. A lot of the freight that the that, that, um, city needs is coming into that one platform, platform one on that bottom station. And, um, you know, our stuff coming from the right side of our screen, the logs and, and that stuff, they're doing great because they've only got two or three, couple, you know, two or three things coming in and no problem. We got a bunch of stuff now stacked up coming in uh, the other way. Plus, we've got that maintenance. It's stinking maintenance is is slowing down the turnaround on these stations and so now we're getting a bottleneck so we're actually slower than we should be because of the maintenance if we got rid of the maintenance i think we'd already be done that's that's kind of sad i, I wish they'd fix that so uh or maybe i just need to start building my maintenance right off the bat but see this stack up look at all that and those are goods that this city needs in order to grow and that's just not acceptable we got too much stuff coming in there uh, onto one line shame on me and we've got the maintenance in there which is slowing us down shame on me and um, it's it's uh, it's slower than it needs to be I mean this should already be done you know we, we've got all that stuff coming in there it should already be done have we done a good design of the track coming in there so now I'm gonna try to fix it I'm gonna try to build a second, you know, kind of double the throughput by building a, 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 a way to get into that uh, platform four down there and then divert some of these trains, go through the lines and divert some of the trains from into platform four. In fact, a lot, I think uh, a lot, you would probably get a lot of hopping, uh, line hopping, where some of these would just naturally pick that one because it's the closest one not sure about that but that could happen but whatever it is we need to, to divide up all those trains that are trying to get in there from the left side of the screen uh, we need to get all those to kind of divide up between platform one and platform four So I'm trying to figure out how to make all this line up to get the curves right. It's harder when you have, you know, we've got a mismatch there because of platform one and platform four. If it was three and four, it'd be a lot easier. But now I'm trying to build um, a, a link back out here away so that some of those trains could go off the other way and that would cause the flow to be a lot better if we kind of divide them up, like I said. And it's another thing that should have been done long ago, or I should have had, what I really should have had, is stick to my own principles about how to play this game, and should have had more dedicated lines and less uh, sharing of the lines. And at a minimum, I should have had um, a bunch of lines coming out of the two stations in Merida, and then the lines hooking up to it with the option of going to either station and to um, multiple platforms and it, then we could have controlled the flow into Merida quite easily and now did you notice it just cleared up I think it's because a bunch of the lines actually hopped and they just went back to the start and now they have hopped and now we've got Merida growing it's almost see, there following my orders, we'll and there the fair success. there it is we, we just hit we just hit our objective Thought we were done, but guess what? We're not done. We've got more work to do. Now we've got to set up three uh, express lines to support his, his uh, election. So uh, we're going to go get to work on that. So after doing all that work, I kind of walked off and left it there and didn't go through, uh, you know, uh, being specific about which trains go to which uh, platform up there. Um, just because we're done and, and I'm starting to get a little tired. I mean, this, is, this has been going on for a while. So um, now we've got a new challenge. So, so we need to set up a line, an express line between Veracruz and Mexico City. And what isn't going to work in all likelihood for doing this is just trying to run a, a train on the line with everything else because there's too much traffic and it's gonna be too slow. 
So what we're going to do is set up a separate line. But we'll do something that, that uh, is very different for me to get this done. We'll expand Mexico City to give us another platform. And then we will run a direct line to, and we have to get away from that tunnel. You can't triple wide your tunnels. So we have to kind of scoot over away from the tunnel and get back on our track and come on down here to Veracruz, running one of our little super highways. And in Veracruz, we'll hook into that, uh, that one platform. Now it's actually sharing with a line coming back the other way, but that's okay. And now our research is going to help us out. Now we are thinking trains, looking for the fastest little old train we can get. And I know it's back here. I haven't found it yet. It's actually one of the two new trains. The, the, the one we've been running is our freight train. And this Sterling right here is 57 mile per hour, and it's designed to be an express train. So we are going to grab the Sterling. And we're going to set up a line uh, as soon as it lets us. We've apparently got, yeah, we've got a little flaw here. Didn't quite like the, the curvature there, but now we've got a line that'll run. Flatten it out a little bit. There we go. So now we've got a line that'll go between Mexico City and Veracruz. And you'll notice I'm setting up the line. I only built one track. I'm only going to run one train. That's what I was talking about. Is different. You, to get an express line, your train has to your trains have to establish a time to run uh, that that line, and they also have to um, then set a record for that time. And you have to be running the fastest train available. It, through the research, and that, and we are. It's the Sterling. I'm also having to fix this line to make them go. I want to make sure that they use track one. Out of Veracruz, and that way, and then that way they'll take that extra track in. Uh, uh, Mexico City. I want them to use that one dedicated line that nobody else is running on. And now we put the Sterling on it. We can give it a conductor because this is going to be a passenger only line. And off he goes. So there he goes. He loads up, loads up a nice load of uh, passengers and mail and takes off. And what I'm going to do now is get rid of that conflict because we've got that line coming in from down south and I wanted to really go over there to that open line I have uh, on platform four so we're going to divert everybody from platform one to platform four these guys right here the ones that are that are coming in like so so I'm just setting it up so it'll run over there to that line going forward There we go. Now they can just curve over and go over into four. And once that train's out of the way, we can delete um, that little section of track right there that goes into platform one to make sure nobody uses it from that direction. Now we've diverted everybody over to the other side and they can run off of platform four. And now our, our express line from Veracruz to Mexico City has a free free uh, platform that no one's competing with them on it. So you can see it's already moving fast, and now we're going to let it just run and get the line. And we need two others, so we need to get started on those as well. So I'm looking to figure out where these cities are. So one of them is Tampico. That's right there just above us on the coast on the um, Gulf side of Mexico. So we can run a line from Mexico City up to Tampico. And we have a free uh, platform in uh, Mexico City from uh, the expansion we did for the other express line. 
and now we can run a single piece of track up here to Tampico and get that line started. And by the way, this single piece of track, it's only because my I've got my head down, I'm trying to finish now. Um, you wouldn't run a single line of track typically. Uh, you would double track it, of course, and you would um, uh, run multiple trains. But I don't want to run multiple trains yet because I want to make sure I get that express uh, train designation. And one of the easiest ways to do that is just get your fastest train out there. See, we're going to give him a stoker, which gives him extra speed. That'll help. And there we've we just got our Veracruz to Mexico City Express. It's now considered an express line. And it'll make pretty good money, just that one train, because it's an express lane line and it'll tend to run full. It will make very good money because it's running between two cities, uh, even with that one piece of track. So for a minimal investment, you can make pretty good money. But it takes a long time to get it all back when you're only running one train. Uh, we've done that in the route optimization studies that uh, city to city that you don't want to do this as a long-term solution. But this is just strictly a, um, a temporary thing to get this done. So now our next one we need is Tampico to Nuevo Laredo uh, up there to the north, getting up close to uh, the United States. So we've got a second line coming out of Tampico, and we're going to go up here to the north and hook it up. Just same technique we used. Nope, we don't want Monterey. We want Nuevo Laredo. And we'll put a station in up there and uh, run our line up on up to that one and get, get one Sterling running a passenger line there and give them a little bit of time for them to establish a time and then set a record. Uh, you know, and, and then we should get our express designation fairly quickly and be in good shape to um, have this task done. And then we'll have our mission done, right? Well, actually, uh, no, there's even more after this, but we will have this next stage done. This is a great, this is a great scenario. It's got a lot of depth, a lot of different things you have to do. And, it's a, and I really like the map and I love the two trains too. Uh, they're they're kind of cool. So here goes our, so now we've got all three of those lines running. It's a matter of time, as I said, to get the uh, express designation. And as I'm playing this, I am thinking, okay, maybe this is it. But at the same time, you can see they've just got that, they're only using like the three, uh, this small part of the scenario screen, the task list. So I'm thinking, hey, you know, there, there might be more, there might be more. This might go on and on. So um, there we've got a nice line running Tampico to Laredo. We've got one running uh, Tampico to Mexico City. And then I remember, whoops, i got to give these people supplies or we're going to have a, a problem. We're never going to get a record if they're slowed down by lack of supplies. Didn't have that problem on that very first one we did because there was already it already hooked into an existing um, supply tower. So there we got Mexico to, City to Tampico. That one's done. Got one more to go up here to Nuevo Laredo. Now we have the opportunity to get another guy that's going to help us with speed, a stoker, who will make that train a little faster, and off, off it goes back the other way. Again with a nice full load. So you're going to make good money and going to satisfy our requirement for uh, an express line. So 
we've got uh, T towns up there that are like 139,000 population. It's pretty good. Mexico City's at 100 and what's that? 106. Uh, so it's doing just fine as well. But we want to get this last um, express line designation so we can get this task done. I'm not sure why I'm running it on regular speed. Obviously, I didn't realize I was. I would have it on fast forward to go ahead and get this done, especially since all I'm doing is looking. Now, this is interesting. Look at the profit that that Veracruz to Mexico City train's making, 16000 that's because of a couple of things. One, all of our research has been for passenger and mail kind of profit. But the big thing is we've got an express line, and it's running full every time because it's just the only train running. And there's two big cities. There's enough volume there to keep it full with, main, I mean, with mail, if nothing else. So it's uh, running full and making really good money. And... Um, so it's interesting that you can run one train and make that much. Now, it does drop off. That was a particularly high. It'll drop down. Its weekly rate will not be that high all the time. No way. But it will be, uh, uh, it is good. Now we're going to add an engineer who also speeds up that last train. So now we've got a stoker and an engineer on that train we're trying to get the express line on. And it should be uh, any time now we should be able to... Uh, make a run, finish it off, and get um, uh, the express designation and have that task completed. And once that does, we'll wrap up this uh, part four, and then, uh, you know, once we see what what's coming up next, uh, we'll wrap up and then we'll uh, deal with uh, our next set of challenges in uh, part five. You can see our money is just racking up because we've got a good economy. Now, if I was a more diligent player, of course, I would go out now and uh, uh, build up some more, you know, connect some more cities and run some more lines and take in some more freight or go up to Merida and fix that little mess up there that I, I made with the um, freight coming into Merida. Uh, but, eh, uh, you know, uh, I, just wanna, I just want to see the next task get done. If you haven't figured out, I'm a very task-driven person. Wow, one of our Sterlings hit 80 miles an hour. That's pretty fast. Pretty fast for 1877. And now, at this point, I'm so bored, I actually start riding along in the train. Something I literally never did. So we're just going to ride along and enjoy the ride until we see what else is coming up. I even blew the whistle. <laughs> But I could only do that for so long. I know some of you have, have, have told me you enjoy just kind of riding along in the trains, find it relaxing. And, you know, whatever floats your boat, man, whatever floats your boat. Um, so here we go back to it again. It is cool, I must say, it is cool watching the trains coming at you when you have a busy area like this where you got a lot of activity. A lot of trains going every which way. I actually spotted something there that was wrong. That log uh, train was coming in partially loaded. That's probably, I probably failed to force it to be um, full. And I remember noticing that when I was actually playing this, not just now. And uh, I, I don't think I ever went back and fixed it.
was actually riding along here thinking I might get a good uh, pyramid spotting, but uh, I never did. What did I tell you? Such prestige projects should only ensure power and influence. Hogwash. I only want the best for our country. And I simply am the best president. All right, so we... we... Done great. <laughs> now it is time to help our industry back on its feet. So, get to work. I'm trying, I'm trying. Okay, we've, we've got our three uh, express lines, so he's elected, and now we've got to do something different. We've got to ship a bunch of fish. We've got, it's a new industry, the fishing, fishing hatcheries or fishing villages, and we've got to make canned goods, which in the case here in Mexico, we're going to have to have steel, and we're going to have to have fish, and we're going to put that uh, fish in, uh, in, combine it with the steel to make uh, canned goods, to canned food. And so um, I thought I'd use our little trick here to make sure we get the 100 fish shipped uh, or yeah, transported. Just going to run a quick uh, little line here from the fishing village over to a little warehouse and just load that warehouse up with fish. So I'm going to run it on full. So... Uh, with loads of eight, I can get 96 fish in there. Uh, so that'll basically, that'll, that we will not have a problem with that particular thing. I don't think I really needed to do this. I, I just, um, I kind of read through those objectives quickly and didn't think about the relationship between the uh, canned food and the fish. Um, you know, since you have to have the fish for the canned goods. Uh, it didn't really matter, but anyway, it didn't hurt anything. So, and again, we're at the point now where money's not the issue. So, going to run uh, fish off into that warehouse, and so now we're going to be transporting a lot of fish. And then we're going to go into uh, figuring out. Okay, well, how do we get these canned goods? We or canned food. All right, so let's wrap up part four here. We'll come back in the fifth and final part and see uh, how we deal with the canned food and also see if uh, the newly elected president of Mexico has anything else he would like us to do. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it'll help you become a better player. And I hope you'll join us for our next Railway Empire video. Thank you.